Good boy, that's very nice. Good lad. Go on, let's go. Come on, in some volunteers. Let's have some, please. Oh, we've got one here, Hannah. Okay, good boy. Do we all think Doc Martin is miserable? Yes. I didn't hear that. Yes. Do we think he's mean <laughs> to family and friends? Yes. Do we think he's terribly mean to this poor little dog? Yes. Poor little Buddy has been traumatised by the doc's <laughs> behaviour. So, Mr. Clunes, a.k.a. Doc Martin, you are on trial. <laughs> to the test. George, do you think the doc is scary? Oh, God. Oh, my. George, please. Please come and say hello to Doc Martin. George, he's not that scary, I can assure you. You're not doing too well, are you, Mr. Clunes? No, Oh dear. Listen, exactly. Now, Cracker loves everybody. Okay, so this is sort of your last chance. Cracker, please come and say hello to Doc Martin. Come and say, oh yes, he's coming in. What do you think of him? <laughs> you are not very popular. Yes, exactly. Right. Sit yourself on that stool, young man. This is trial by dog. <laughs> right, Dodger. Dodger, it's chance to get your own back on the miserable dog who's locked him in boots, who slammed doors in his face, who shooed him out of the surgery, who shooed him out of the kitchen. Go on, Dodge. Get your own back on him. Go on, boy. Good boy. Go on, Dodge. Go on, you can start on his ankle next. <laughs> so that's an emphatic dogs behaving badly and sticking up for their big... He carries this everywhere with him. Bless his heart, he's weeing in his own bucket. How clean is that? 
<laughs> Goodness, he really wants to go. <laughs> Nothing happens. It's a completely trained behaviour. They don't associate it with the actual act of going to the toilet. Now, my judges this afternoon, have I got them, please? I've got Martin. He's willing. He's here. I just want to very quickly, while Martin's giving out, just let you hear a brief story of the winner. Right, this is Wiley. In 2011, he was rescued from a forced dogfight in Kandahar, Afghanistan. He then became a target for all sorts of abuse, and he's had his ears cut off, his penis severed, he's been stabbed, he's been run over. But despite all that, he's the most loving, friendly dog. It loves everyone and he's well, he's amazing so we're here to support Nauzad as the charity that rescued him. I find this story incredible because this dog still trusts human beings. I you know if you go up to him he'll be quite happy. But for a dog to trust human beings after going through that sort of treatment, I find it incredible. Big hand now for the Leonberger karting team just leaving the arena. Thank you very much. I've got a lost dog. Does anybody recognise it? <laughs> it's Jim again. Look, there you go, Jim. If you go into class one, <laughs> now you'll all have to go to the big room. We've got one winner and five runners up. So smile nicely, dogs. This is your last opportunity. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, first place is number 703. Andrew. And hopefully in a minute, you'll flop over like this. Good boy. Good boy. And I'll just sit on him, have a little cup of tea, like this. What's up now? He's still eating the grass, isn't he? Yeah, he's quite happy. A bit like a Labrador, isn't he? That's why he's a yeah. fat. Then I get him going the other way. Good boy. Nice little tight circle. And he gets used to me rubbing him all over. I try and make it as extraordinary, 
accepting as I can. Now, if you were to pop into my yard, just pop in, like, just put your head around the door, you might be wondering, what on earth is he doing? You might be thinking, crikey, is that healthy? Is he preparing the mare for the stallion? You never know, do you? But as he's a gelding, we've got no problem there, so... You know, he's got a lovely wife and three children. Why on earth would he spoil it just for this horse? So anyway, this horse, if I can get him used to doing all this, like this, then I know that my horse is getting sounder. Really. I hold, wait for him to, to, to give. I hold, wait for him to give, and I let go. So I'm always giving back to him. I'm always giving him that chance. I want him to stop. I want to drop his head, so I wait. He's looking over there. I want him to back. I want to back nice and soundly. I want to turn that way. But I'm offering a nice soft feel all the time. Watching me and the horse. I think the horse has probably surpassed himself. I'm really pleased. I want to thank you all so much for being such a lovely audience. Right, in first place, number 604, Biggles. Westlake, who you can see on Deep Space waving to you all now, and a team of dedicated volunteers. Some of you might be avid race goers, other of you may just have a flutter on the Grand National once a year. But how many of you have ever wondered what happens to the, these magnificent athletes once their racing days are over? These are highly trained athletes we're talking about here, not riding school horses. However, it seems with certain regularity that more meaning members of the public take on an ex-racehorse, often with no previous experience of thoroughbreds at all. Today, thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for your attention. We really hope that you've enjoyed learning a bit about us and our horses. We will be here for a bit longer, so please feel free to come and meet the horses and ask any questions you might have. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs>